This Capture the Flag challenge is called the Da Vinci Code. It's a medium challenge in the web category that I made. I created this for the NomCon Capture the Flag competition, and the description is, uh, someone made a Da Vinci Code fan page, but they spelt it wrong, and it looks like the website seems broken. This is a deployable per instance, hey, you can go ahead and spin up the task. We'll click the start button here to make that available for us, but I will be running this locally, and I'll walk you through it, and I'll tell you what this challenge is and how we put it together. So I am running this challenge locally. I've just spun up the Docker container on localhost port 5000, but we're presented with this website for the DaVinci Code. Uncover and unravel the secrets hidden in the works of DaVinci. Join us as we delve deeper into the mysteries, blah, blah, blah. Not much here. There is a simple button to learn about the code. And clicking this brings us to a template not found error with Jinja 2. So we can presume this is a Flask application. In fact, if you wanted to go take a look at the headers, I'll open up F12 on my keyboard, simple network tab. Hey, if I actually take a look at any of these, I think even just the logo.png. Yeah, anything that comes from the server, you can see the server response header is workzerg python 3.9. So this is a Python Flask server. Seeing that error message clues me in that we're likely in developer mode, so I could probably just go to slash console, but that will require a pin or some active number, the key to be able to actually enter and execute Python code. So that's not super duper helpful for us unless we can figure out some other vulnerability like local file inclusion or some other gimmick to actually beat this thing. Up. But we could actually take another look at the error message that we had, because look, this is going to give us a trace back, and that might actually clue us in on some parts and pieces of the code. Scrolling down, you can see the line that's highlighted on slash app app.py, so that gives us at least the name of the source code and the file that's ran in the Python script, and we can see, okay, there's the app.route for code, we would re render the template for that HTML file, but it's not found, so that presumably doesn't exist. Now, it's funny, I got a lot of players saying, oh no, the challenge is broken, uh, but Again, the challenge description was to intentionally say, yes, the website is broken. This is because I left behind this breadcrumb for you. This little Easter egg where the other route, just simply the index page or the forward slash, includes another method. It's not just simply a get method you could do with HTTP, but there's also a prop find method available to you. Now, if you were to Google this prop find HTTP method, you'll see that, hey, it is a web dev method. In fact, that's kind of the whole gimmick here that's meant to be returned with web distributed authorizing and versioning, authoring and versioning, whatever. It's web dev. That's the whole joke for the Da Vinci code, dav over and over again, is that this is a web dev request. Now, here's a gimmick because you're working with a Python Flask server that also seemingly supports some web dev stuff. Anyway, we could just go figure it out. We could try to run any of these headers or even just see, okay, what's the server gonna do? You could take a look at hack tricks, you could look at other resources, or you might just be able to run dav test. That is literally a web dav testing utility that you'd supply, pass in, hey, whatever URL that you're working with, and let's see what it will tell us. So dav test tack URL, HTTP, and I'm on localhost 5000 for this little video showcase, but okay, it seems to connect, it does tell me open, but it also says fail. Operation failed, you can only open a collection or a directory. Uh, do I use a forward slash there? No, that doesn't seem to work. What if we had like anything that obviously does not exist? That will, should error, yeah, okay, cool. So different error, that'll say, look, that's not dav enabled or accessible. So presumably we're at the right thing, but we're not gonna get a whole lot of info out from this tool. Is that the same error message even for something that like clearly doesn't have web dav? Oh, no, 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 that'll say it specifically. So the page seemingly does have web dev functions accessible. Obviously we saw the method in the source code. So let's try to use a different command or another tool and utility like curl, because that will allow us to specify the method that we want to use with that tack capital X argument. So rather than get or post in this case for other HTTP methods, we're going to use that web dev one prop find on that address, localhost port 5,000. So this, Ooh, returns a heck of a lot more interesting stuff here. I can copy and paste all this because this is meant to be XML output, right? Let me just bring that into a text editor. With that, I can, uh, hey, indent XML here. Yeah, and we'll set the syntax highlighting in Sublime Text. Thank you so much. Now this is interesting because it presumably is returning like 
the files in the current directory. Like you can see PyCache is included. You can see static. That's normally where we're hosting static files, right? Like the logo.png image that we saw. Templates, okay, where we would have seen code.html and app.py. Oh, okay, so even the source code for the application itself. Question is, could we pull that down? We can try it. Let me use curl prop find slash app.py. Uh, no, doesn't really tell us anything other than that it is a file. Okay, so that's not super duper helpful. But what about the templates, right? Did that have code.html in there? We could run that on slash templates, presumably. Okay, that returns stuff. That gives us a directory listing, right? Let me run index indent HTML. Yeah, okay, so it does not have code.html literally. That's interesting though, because we've now learned two things. For one thing, we have directory listing. We could see the files present on the file system. Uh, and it is still a Python Flask server though, so it has to have specific routes set up, even for an index.html or a code.html. But so far, we haven't really seen any other vulnerabilities other than it just having, oh, the capability to do this web dev prop find method. So we could explore that a little bit further, but at least on the topic of vulnerabilities, if I may, I would love to say, look, the only reason that I can get out videos, education, cybersecurity stuff, material training, capture the flag competitions just like this, especially with I'm working with a team of folks that are developing challenges, I gotta make sure they get paid. I would love to include some sponsorship for this video. I'm so, so thankful for all their support. And with that, please take it away, Prelude Security. Imagine if you could automate turning current threat intelligence into active high fidelity detection rules. What if you could safely test your security posture against the latest threats that are out there? That is what Prelude Security allows you to do. With their latest innovation, they automatically consume threat intel reports, extract the relevant technical details, and transform them into detections that can be directly pushed to your EDR or XDR solution and verified security tests to validate your new detections. And it's all done in just a few minutes. Honestly, it is super cool to see it in action. And with Prelude, you can ensure your defenses are continuously up to date and protected against today's threats. Get started with Prelude security with my link below in the video description, jh.live slash Prelude. Huge thanks to Prelude Security for sponsoring this video. All right, so back on the keyboard, well, let's review as to where we were. We did have some prop find capability, and when we were looking at the root of the file system, we saw a lot of interesting stuff. At the very least, oh, the root structure, the directory listing, things presented here for the application. But there was one that I didn't get a chance to drill down into yet. We saw static, we saw templates, we saw our app.py, but we also have at the very bottom, the secret DAVINCHI code. So I'm presuming that, okay, maybe there are some secrets or some juicy info hidden there. We can get back to our command line, try and run the exact same thing, but include that location for the secret DAVINCHI code. If I curl that down, ooh, you can see, uh, I might need to make this pretty, but you can actually probably see in just that output itself, when we do directory listing on the secret DaVinci code, we have flag.txt included within that directory. So we're thinking, oh, okay, we could just go navigate to that with our web browser, right? Let me go back to the page here. We wanna go to pasting in my address bar, the secret Da Vinci code and then flag.txt, but that gives a 404. That is not returned. It's not there at all. Even uh, network tab running obviously. Oh, I had the filter on. No, that's a 404. So what about the secret Da Vinci code on its own? Still a 404. What is going on? It looked like we saw that considering the web dev prop find request. Well, don't forget, this is a Flask application and it will only have routes for things that it has specifically stated to be a route, like index.html or code.html that we didn't actually have. So it must not have a handler to actually bring you to the secret DaVinci code folder and the flag inside of it. Um, that's odd though. 
what else could we explore? I mean, there wasn't really a whole lot else in the command line here. When we were looking at the directory listing of the application here, we had, okay, templates, app.py, that are secret DaVinci code, but there really wasn't anything else we dug into other than static. Static is where it should have just those logos and images and like JavaScript CSS libraries, right? Is there even anything worthwhile in static? Ooh, there might be. Let's pull that down, clean this up just a little bit. But yeah, there is the logo.png and oh, they must have been hiding something else here. In fact, I was, I'm, <laughs> I don't know why I'm being coy. I know I wrote this challenge. Uh, App.py.backup is accessible and it's in a static directory, which means it'll just serve and give out all the files in that location. That's how Python Flask apps typically work, right? Because JavaScript, CSS, that stuff just needs to be statically served and not have a given route or handle to them. So we could, at that point, just try to use that app.py.backup that we know is in the static directory, right? We don't need to use the prop find here because that is really, again, web dev asking for the things, but we could just use a regular get request, right? Maybe change that method there or just use default curl or navigate to this in our web browser. It's just gonna get served to us. So I'll render this and now we have presumably source code to the application. I'm just gonna slap this into sublime text so I can get some syntax highlighting for us. And it is all in Python, right? Just as expected. Flask application, everything that we understood. Static directory put to life. Okay, there's our static path. Again, genuinely, just sending from that location. And we have a function to handle a web dev response that seemingly is, again, just kind of, hey, building that directory listing or directory indexing functionality. And that's actually staged and set up as a handler. So that web dev capability is accessible for just about every specific endpoint, location and route here. That's interesting because that's where we get confused between what is a web dev functionality and what's just regular Flask and the Python web server. Interesting though, because this has other methods configured. We have get, as we've seen, prop find, as we've seen, but even move, and that's new and might give us some cool, clever capability here because we saw that our code endpoint would break to begin with, index gave us prop find, but now we've unlocked something new because we've been able to essentially, oh, track down the backup source code here. Silly, I know, whatever unrealistic premise, I don't care, it's a capture the flag challenge, but look, we can move. And the logic for that is defined here. If the request method is to move, then we'll get a destination coming from the headers provided. That should be destination, right? If we have that, then we'll join together the path from our current directory and put inside of the directory here, the file that we're specifying. So we genuinely legitimately have move capability. And we know where on the file system, there is a flag thanks to prop find. And we know that static directories, static locations will just send any file. So let's put those puzzle pieces together and we could just move the flag into the static directory so we can read it. That sounds like a fine plan and path of attack. So what we need to do is use a regular curl command, except we're now going to be using tack X with the header to move. Now, if we look back at the syntax, I'll get back to that URL. The source code here tells us that the full path, what we actually request from the web location is where we're moving it to given the destination. So our destination should be the static location and our full path that we're actually requesting with curl should be the web dev secret DaVinci code flag.txt, right? Let's try and build that out. We know that we'll go to secret, oh, what is it? The, let's move from that location given the flag.txt there. We do need to supply a header. So let me move to the very front of the command. I'll use tack capital H to supply a header and we'll say the destination should be relative from the app's location, right? Because you saw the os.getcwd, the current working directory. So static should be just from the directory listing that we saw, flag.txt present there. We're just moving the secret DaVinci codes file 
into static. Now, I can't view that right now, obviously. If I were to go to slash static flag.txt, that doesn't exist until we get to do the secret sauce. And fingers crossed, I'll move that to the side, bring open our flag.txt here. Now that should be there. It is. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I I know, I, I'm talking as an actor. I I did make this challenge, but I thought that was a little bit neat. I thought that was a cutesy gimmick. I thought that was worth some creative than uh, critical thinking to see what you all could do here. What would prop find tell us now? Obviously that should be where it should be. Prop find now to static. Uh, yeah, that'll just literally list out flag.txt because we were able to move it over there. Now that is included. And of course that is how we get the flag and could submit that and solve that medium web challenge, the DaVinci code with some web dev tricks. Hey, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed that little trick. Hey, some clever things we can do and sort of unlocking and finding new puzzle pieces and breadcrumbs for the Capture the Flag Challenge. I hope you really enjoyed the NomCon at CTF if you did get a chance to play. If not, we'll have the challenges up and available on like NYPT, Name Your Price Training or something uh, in the future. But hey, thanks so much for watching. Please do all those YouTube algorithm things. Please give our sponsors some love. Link in the video description. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.